the goal is to get back on track. The ceiling, we have gone for the coal run wood die. That ain't paint. That is a very solid lump of mush. So next up on our itinerary today is the extension kit for the Fiamma um, roof vent 28. Bing! And that's the fan complete. <laughs> so it looks like the fan is incomplete. We bought gas. We will have a refillable gas system. Couldn't have gone any worse. Hi guys, we are Nick and Sam and this right here is Lord Onyx. We have been living and travelling in self-built camper vans since 2018 and between us we have converted four vans. For the past few series we have been vlogging our van life adventures which has taken us through Spain, Portugal, Scotland, Norway and Germany. But if you know anything about van life, a build is always calling. So this time around, Terra will be resting her wheels whilst we take on the challenge of building van number five. Welcome back to Le Dork Van Build. Last week was very very busy for us on the build we have now got the van at the halfway stage hence why we didn't upload a youtube last week because we we're also behind on where we wanted to be so we thought let's not waste time editing not waste but not spend time editing and get back on track so the goal for the first part of this video is to get back on track which is painting the van and staining the roof. And then the next part of the video is gonna be all about installing the gas. Today I headed out to Loughborough to meet the guys from Eberspacker again. And whilst I was there, I realized that gas low was literally three minutes around the corner. So of course I popped in. We will be going for the exact same gas setup that we've got in the van we live in, which is a 11 kilogram refillable gas low cylinder. The only difference is we're gonna have an official gas low gas locker too. Something we've not had in our vans. We usually DIY airtight containers, but as this is a rental, it's best to go for the real deal. So while Sam is working on the filling and sanding of the van, I thought I'd show you the bits that we've got for painting. So we've gone to Lick for all of our paints and equipment. We've got our filler and our spatula to like scrape the filler in from them as well as this big kit here that has like rollers roller trays etc tape and things like that everything you need to paint a van so the color we've gone for as well is the lick white 05 so it's like slightly off white we've got two of these and then we've got two other colors that will complement the van which we'll show you when we get there um, so right now it's just making the white shell and for the ceiling, we have gone for the coal run wood dye Jacobean dark oak. Sorry, I had to look at that then. Couldn't remember it off the top of my head. So hopefully with the, the white shell, the dark roof, it will look probably quite similar to Terra, the van we live in, but we're gonna bring in some other complements of wood colors and other colors in general. So hopefully it will be popping by the end of this. Really excited. So let's get painting. <laughs> That ink paint, that is a very solid lump of mush, basically. So what am I thinking? We can still do the ceiling, can't obviously paint. Um, I have a feeling it's gone like this because we had the Arctic blast the other week and this was stored in the garage, so it probably got really cold. So we're gonna have to sort out four new tins of paint. So that's gonna delay that. Um, I mean, we can just start doing the gas first instead, but we just, we we're trying to get the paint done because it was supposed to have been done last week so it would have been nice to have got it done this week but it looks like now it's going to be another job for another week so paint the ceiling sorry stain the ceiling and then move on to the gas really gutted about that um yeah because i don't know how long it'll take to get a new a new batch of tins so <laughs> apply the stain I have used a paintbrush and a lint-free cloth to rub it in. The tin does say to just use a lint-free cloth and a sponge but I find using the lint-free cloth only at the beginning soaks up too much of the stain so I brush it on and then I rub it in to remove the strokes of the brush. But of course it is up to you how you want to apply it. Itinerary today is 
going back to the fact. So we ordered the extension kit online. As always, we'll link all of the products in the description below. Um, so this is what we've got, the extension kit for the Fiamma um, Roof Vent 28. I haven't opened it yet, so... I mean, I kind of know obviously what's inside because I ordered it, but it looks like there's two handles. So let's see what's in the pack. So we've got a good start. Two handles, I think. I'll figure out why there's two when we start installing it because of course they just, it has to make sense, right? We've got some longer bolts, screws, things which I wasn't sure if we were gonna get, so that's why we got the four other ones, but either way, we need eight, so this is perfect. And then this, which I believe is the actual extension thing, so it can slot into the higher bit and we can spin it and open it because currently it's been left a little bit open and we haven't been able to close it unless we pull all the screws down and take it down, which I can't bother to do, but we can do that now. So. Let's go figure it out. <laughs> also nearly forgot to mention, it is 16 pounds for this extension kit, including postage approximately across all the different sites. So a reasonable price. So we are literally just following the instructions that have come in the pack. Um, it's all just pictures. So you kind of have to interpret it yourself. But I think it should be quite straightforward. Like I said, once we pull it all out, we should be able to just see what pops out and what pops in, surely. <laughs> No, now look, it won't go that smoothly. The extension is pretty straightforward. We've got this little spindle that sits on top of the one that we've already got. I'm glad you and then know all the you names of the parts. <laughs> I'm just calling it a spindle. Oh. I don't know what the hell it's called. And then literally all you got to do is just screw it in to tighten it up and that should be enough for our fan. However, in the kit you do get another little windy thing for making the fan go up and down. So that's an extension as well because this is the original. But the kit came with two handles, yeah? Yeah. So why is there two handles in an extension kit? I don't know why, because that's literally the same A one duplicate as... of the same. Yeah. So one handle is just a dud then, yeah? So yeah. the other one you can extend yeah. and Depending spindle. Depending on how far your... Feeling so fancy. <laughs> yeah, no, we bought one that I think extends it to 80 millimetre, which is correct for us. So, yeah. um, this should yeah. be like I said, I'll link it. I'll link it so you've got the exact details. <laughs> like the fan is incomplete <laughs> why because we just tested the electrics and when the fan spun it was hitting can you just lift that up a second it was hitting this so actually the extension kit has like because it shifted it down it then doesn't fit so i don't get this fan this fan has been really irritating to work with i'm, I'm not gonna lie <laughs> Like, it's been pretty shit. If you have an extension kit for a fan by the same brand, then it should work whatever level you decide to extend it. Otherwise, don't extend it to that level. Oof. Yeah, no? Yeah. So, we do have a solution, don't we? We're not going to be using the spindle. Instead, we're going to be using this handle, which is longer than the original. Yeah, so and it's it got that perfectly. little extension. Um, so yeah, bought an extension kit all to just use the extended handle rather than this extension spindle. <laughs> yes. There we go again. This is the last time if it's not, I'm clocking off. Yeah, I'm clocking off anyway. Yeah, so am I, I said it better. We're going on a date night tonight, guys. And okay. you are not invited. <laughs> You're not invited, guys, sorry. We're going to a, uh, like a new Pan-Asian vegan restaurant in Shrewsbury to trial, aren't we? Because they've got um, adobo, which is a Filipino food that I've not been able to eat in four years because it's meat-based, but they've made a vegan version, so I'm really excited. And we're doing, as you guys said as well, by not using the electric drill all the way to the top because it's just too harsh for this fan. Yeah. And then the insect case 
that only works if you put it in a certain way. <laughs> it has to go this back end first, doesn't it, Sam? It does. Should we do yes. it together again? Yeah. Way! High five! Woo! It's finally done. Now, time Let's to get electrics. ready for our day. Test the electrics, test the electrics. Oh, yeah. Time to test the electrics. Ready? Yeah. Just what I need on a winter's day. Yeah. <laughs> today is a new day, the sun is out, so I have this feeling that today is gonna go well. And if not, you guys need to send us some luck because we do not want a repeat of what happened over the weekend. It was just bad luck after bad luck. So today, plans. We are heading to our local caravan gas supplier place, um, sorry like gas fitter place. Because this van is going to be up for rental we need to get a landlord gas certificate that is like an essential. So we need to check in with them if they can one do that which when we spoke to them a few months ago they said they know someone who could. Two, what we are actually allowed to fit ourselves to um, be able to get sign off because we don't want to touch anything if they're saying they've got to fit it all. Um, so yeah, we're going to figure that all out now and we'll let you know what the answer is. And also we're going to try find some cheap white paint just to get the first coat of paint in the van because otherwise if Sam's fitting the gas I'm just going to be standing around. So we both need something to do. Rolling through the radio and you drive to work or what? Today, it couldn't have gone any worse, really. So we went out, we spoke to the gas people, which actually went fine. Um, let's start with the good news. So they have basically said that we can fit everything that we've got ourselves. If we want to fit it all ourselves, that's fine. But then when the, like, the person who does the certification let's say he's not happy with it then we just have to undo it and then put the pipe works back in but we're just going to stick with putting the gas a cylinder and locker in and the filler tap as we don't have the hobs anyway to connect the gas so we'll wait until um, the engineer is ready and maybe just do it kind of together um, as we need that certificate the bad news is when we went to go get some paint we kind of ended up in like a little car crash someone pulled out in front of us without looking which caused us to emergency brake and then someone hit our car because they were trying to turn in and it was just a ricochet of shit, basically so <laughs> the bad luck hasn't stopped <laughs> and we don't have any paint so we because we were just like we we're just so angry and adrenaline was going through us and stuff so we were like let's just call it quits and go back to the van build and do the things that we know we can do today so <laughs> honestly I've never I've never met a couple with as much as much bad luck as us but gas let's let's think about gas and talk gas okay so let's start with talking about our gas setup my mind is literally like everywhere so gas setup we will have a refillable gas system and it will literally only be powering the hobs, so dual hobs that will sit in the kitchen, and that is it. So the bits that we've gone for, I'm really having to think here, guys, is this 11 kilogram refillable gas cylinder. You're gonna say it's huge, and yes it is. Um, in my little camper, I had the six kilogram one, and it used to last about like two to three months, um, powering just the gas hobs as well. So. You're gonna ask me why I've gone this big and it's purely down to the fact that it's a rental and my dad is going to potentially be managing it and I don't want him to have to keep doing loads of work and topping up so I thought if I go for the 11, we can fill it up and leave it there and hopefully it'll just last the whole summer period and he doesn't then need to touch it. So like the less work for him, the better. Um, and also it was actually only 50 pound more to go for the 11 kilogram gas setup over the six. So. It, in the end it just felt like it made sense I don't know that's just why so next up is this gas locker <laughs> it's so big and um, this is a gas low gas locker so like the legit one because again rental I want everything to be proper and what it is let's open it for you I've had to turn it on its side because it's so airtight it's hard to unlock but it's got these four little 
things that you can unlock it and then here it is inside it has a drop vent and a canister strap so you do have to put your own hole in it for the gas hose as well as the drop vent so we've got to do that today so next up we've got this refiller kit so this is basically like the cap that sits on the outside of your van so you can fill the tank up with the LPG so we've gone for oh, a grey which is the exact same colour as the bumpers of the van you can get it in white and black as well and we've also selected I think it was the 1.5 meter hose you can get it in different lengths like 60 and stuff which is cheaper but I don't know uh, 60 seems too restricted to work with and I didn't know exactly how much we needed so I went for the one and a half the last thing we've got for our setup is this regulator well that's the box this is the regulator um I couldn't tell you exactly what it does it regulates the gas and, and that's about it all I know is it's needed um so yeah these are literally the four things that you need to create your own refillable gas set up in your van in case you don't remember our layout design I'm going to quickly run through the area of the gas now so this is a corner kitchen or will be <laughs> we've got our heater installed at the back our diesel here then it will be followed by a gas then fridge and and then the bedroom so I thought I'd just show you exactly where the gas locker will sit which is here and what the guys at Gaslow said as well is to make sure that the holes for the pipes are as high up on the locker as possible as well as the filler cap being higher than the locker because gas is heavier than air so it just helps with it all like you know doing its thing so yeah this is where it's going look what's just happened his dad's just popped out with a can of white paint that he isn't going to be using so we can put that as our first coat on the walls and just get started with that so already feeling a lot more positive To install the gas we started by cutting the necessary holes into the gas locker. So it's now time to think about cutting the hole for the gas fill up in the side of the van but it's Hello. not <laughs> it's not so easy is it? I mean it is and it isn't it? obviously you don't want on the outside of the van it curves in so you don't want to yeah, put it on I'll there. Yeah I'll show you. We obviously don't want the filler cap to sit in do no, we? No and you need a 70 millimeter hole as well for the for the cap and Nick wants to have this little gas canister locker up against the wall so there's no hose trailing around so we need to make sure that it sits above the gas bottle as well but but where we've marked you can see a little black mark here it's about 35 centimeters down from the window where we've marked is basically where the curve is on the other side of the van yeah so and we need to make sure that the filler cap sits higher than the gas canister so technically we can move it down a bit but it's better if we go up but then it's going to sit really high up i'll show you so from the market inside 35 and a half centimeters reaches here but we're going to have a 70 millimeter hole yeah so it's going to definitely hit into this groove so we either move it up to here or, or a tiny down bit here. down which does still sit above the gas canister it just might Slightly. mean that the hose dips a little mm -hmm. which I know they've said not to do but it's not that big of a deal but I just don't think I want a gas hole all the way up here yeah I don't know that seems ugly doesn't it yeah I think it'll be fine so then. a little bit down yep I'm sharing this with you guys just so you can see like the decision making that has to be done as you're <laughs> building like sometimes you, you can't you can't pre-plan this mm -hmm. you have no idea until it comes and then you've got to decide otherwise it's not going to happen so decision made tiny bit lower let's do it it's now time to cut the hole into the side of the van, the bit that we all hate, but here we go. We've started with the hole on the outside rather than the in, so we could pick the perfect placement for the filler cap. The inside hole did need to be a bit bigger, so we just used this as a template and then grabbed a multi-saw to widen the hole. We are now adding in the gas canister straps to hold it in place, one about a quarter way up and the other about two thirds.
it is now time to cut the hole in the floor. So we have gone underneath the van and it is all clear where we want it, which is good because when I did the layout, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't look underneath the van to know where things can and can't go. So thank God something has gone right for us today. So we're now gonna drill the hole. As you can see, it's pitch black out, but we've got this spare battery to have the lights on so we can keep working. So I think We'll do that and then tomorrow we'll seal it all up and stuff when we can properly see. <laughs> that is pretty chunky. It's just not worth buying a whole new ceiling for one little job. Oh my wow. god! <laughs> Don't talk while you're performing the job. We can. There we go. There we go. All cleaned up. <laughs> what in the hell is that? <laughs> Sam, what is that? That's called a ceiling. <laughs> I need a lot more of that. It's all fixable, and that's all that matters, ah. right? It's just getting worse and worse, Sam. Um. What's that? It's like the storm before the car, is that the saying? I can't pull the storm. Oh, well, it's the other way around here. <laughs> okay, let's hurry this up. And there we go. It's like it never happened. And now it's cleaner than the rest of the van too. And that brings us to the end of what we are able to do for the gas room. We can only continue when we get the hobs and when that is, I have no idea. A so few more weeks. This will go in with the hobs. As you can see, we've got the gas bowl in a gas locker. It's got some braces so when we drive it doesn't shuffle around. And for the inlet, we've gave it a nice surround. Little plaque. And for the next task, we're going to be boxing off the heater. So we're going to be putting a plinth just on top of it so things don't fall on it and gives us a bit of extra storage. Say hello to my little plinth. <laughs> so we actually use this out of scrap wood that we had lying around and fortunately it pretty much fits the gap yeah. good enough. So we're going to be using this as our shelf. We're going to be mounting it using these modesty blocks. So these will sit underneath the shelf and then just to give it a bit of extra support we got some legs. And that is a wrap on this week's vlog, guys. We've made some wicked yeah. movement on the van haven't we i mean we've had a lot of bad luck this week but yeah. really really happy because we have officially hit the halfway yeah. stage sweet <laughs> fucking wicked and next week we're going to be kicking off with starting the furniture yeah which is my favorite bit so i'm really glad to be putting all this behind <laughs> us so now time to cue all of the things we have achieved this week let's show off <laughs>